Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we're going to talk about infrastructure as code utilities, or specifically, I'm going to compare Ansible and Terraform. And as part of that discussion, I'm going to let you guys know what Ansible and Terraform do, what the goal is that they attempt to solve, why you'd want to use one or the other or both. I'll talk about how they're the same and also how they're different. Now I know that some of you out there that are watching this video might be more familiar than some. And if so, you might be asking, why is he going over a comparison of Terraform and Ansible when they're technically completely different solutions? Well, that is true. Ansible and Terraform are designed to solve separate goals. But the fact is a lot of people actually compare these two tools, which is why this video is actually necessary. Now, before we get into that, though, I just want to mention that the theme in this video is infrastructure as code tools. That's what Terraform and Ansible are. They're infrastructure as code tools. They're in the same category. But again, even though they're in the same category, they solve different goals. But the idea behind infrastructure as code is that as an administrator, it's just not a good idea to do everything manually. In fact, automating things is almost always a better way to go. I mean, think about it. If you want to set up 100 servers, do you want to do that manually? I know I don't. That doesn't sound like a fun time for me. Well, actually, it kind of does because I love setting up servers, but that's actually not an efficient way to do it. Automation is better because it helps eliminate, you know, human error and things like that. But also, it just makes everything simpler, more efficient, and also results in less work. And as administrators, that's a great thing because we often work well, you know, longer hours. Anyway, as infrastructure of code utilities, Terraform and Ansible, where they're actually similar, is they attempt to automate something. In the case of Terraform, it attempts to automate the building of infrastructure. You know, spinning up a server and possibly setting up a network, a software-defined network, or security groups, firewalls, things like that. The idea behind Terraform is to make things exist. I think that's a very simple way to put it for starting out. Terraform helps make things exist. Now, Ansible, on the other hand, takes things that already exist and helps you configure those things or manage the configuration of the infrastructure components on your network. Now, to begin this discussion, let's first understand what Ansible is. Maybe it's something that you've heard of and you've heard other administrators talking about it, but what exactly is Ansible? Well, first of all, Ansible is a configuration management solution and its job is to provision software, devices, and also deploy applications that will run on that infrastructure. Ansible is very flexible. It can integrate with cloud networks. It's compatible with most Linux distributions, and it operates on a designated instance that's isolated from the network environment where the deployment is actually taking place. When it comes to the language that Ansible understands, Ansible uses the YAML format, so by using Ansible, you're creating YAML files, which are text files that are in a particular format. It's what Ansible uses, but it's not invented by Ansible. Terraform also uses standard text files as well, but it doesn't use a standard format. The idea around using config files, you know, text files with configuration commands within the text files themselves, that's actually fairly common across all the solutions in this particular category. Now, another benefit of Ansible is that it's agentless. Other solutions like Puppet, Chef, and so on will have an agent application that you install on the server that you want to be managed by that solution. And you just make sure that agent is running and that agent is required. But with Ansible, you don't actually have to install anything on the target system at all. What Ansible does is it utilizes SSH to connect to the host that is configuring. And SSH is something that your server will likely have anyway. So it just logs into that server via SSH and executes commands on that server in order to bring it up to spec. Maybe you're setting up a web server or a database server, and in your YAML files, your playbooks, you'll have all the configuration options and tweaks and commands and things right in those files that will ultimately transform your vanilla or otherwise unchanged Linux instance into what it actually should become. Again, a database server, a web server, maybe a file server, whatever it is that the goal is for that server to solve. Ansible's job is to customize and configure that server until it matches your specification. And Ansible is one of my favorite technologies. I absolutely love it. In fact, I adore it. It's my configuration management solution of choice. Now, I just gave you a summary of Ansible, but let's take a look at Terraform. What is Terraform and what's the goal that Terraform helps you solve? Terraform is an infrastructure of code solution. 
Terraform's primary goal is to create infrastructure. Even with a completely empty and fresh cloud account with your cloud provider, Terraform is able to access that account and build pretty much everything. For example, if you wanted to set up an Ubuntu server, then Terraform can absolutely spin up a server on your platform that runs Ubuntu. Terraform is able to log in to virtually any cloud environment out there because it supports the majority, if not all of them, and spin up servers like an Ubuntu server, even a Windows server if that's something that you want. The same is true for network subnets. It's absolutely able to create those as well. In fact, Terraform could set up basically everything when it comes to your infrastructure. But the difference between Terraform and Ansible is that as soon as Terraform has, in fact, provisioned the infrastructure that you want created, that's where it stops. Now, sure, you could set up Terraform to run a bash script on all of the servers that it sets up, and perhaps that script will have some commands for installing packages, installing updates, and things like that. So you can absolutely use Terraform for configuration management, but that's not its primary goal, and it's just not as efficient as Ansible is when it comes to configuration management, because Terraform is actually not a configuration management solution at all. That's just not the goal that it tries to solve. And that's also one of the reasons why Terraform and Ansible complement each other so well. As soon as Terraform does its job and creates the infrastructure that you want created in your cloud environment, then Ansible is able to then connect to any of those infrastructure components and further configure them. Since Terraform's primary goal is to build infrastructure, and Ansible's primary focus is configuration management, then Terraform can create all of the components within your infrastructure when it comes to cloud infrastructure that you want created. And then Ansible can then in turn log into each of those components and further configure them. For example, if you instruct Terraform to spin up 100 Debian servers, and then sometime later, there's a very important security update that you need to have installed on each of those servers, the last thing you probably want to do is log in manually and install the patch on each and every system one by one. That's a very time consuming task. But if you instruct Ansible to ensure that the patch is installed in every server, then Ansible is able to do that work for you. It's able to log into each and every one of those servers and install that patch. You give Ansible one command and then it just goes ahead and carries it out. So again, Terraform is able to create infrastructure and Ansible is best used to configure that infrastructure after it's created. So again, that's why Terraform and Ansible are a perfect match for each other. Now the infrastructure that Terraform creates is known as immutable infrastructure. Immutable infrastructure is infrastructure that is created fresh whenever there's a configuration change rather than making changes to an existing resource. Using my Debian example from earlier, let's say later on once Debian 12 is released, you have to go through the upgrade process on each of those 100 servers. Again, that's going to be very time consuming. In that situation, for example, what you might do is adjust your Terraform configuration to use Debian 12 instance images rather than images for Debian 11 like your organization used before. Now, considering that Terraform creates immutable infrastructure, what that means in this case is that Terraform will recreate the server instances from scratch with Debian 12 rather than upgrade your existing Debian 11 servers to the newer version. And that's what immutable means in context of Terraform. Rather than update things, it's often going to completely recreate things. And that also means that your infrastructure will always consist of fresh instances if you utilize Terraform. When it comes to Ansible, however, Ansible is not immutable like Terraform is. For example, let's say that there's a critical vulnerability that's been found and threat actors are actively using that vulnerability to gain unauthorized access to your servers. In that case, it's very important to make sure that the patch is installed on each and every server. Just like I mentioned before, if your organization has hundreds of servers, then it would be very time consuming to manually install that patch on each of those servers. But since Ansible is mutable, you know, the opposite of immutable, you can define a requirement that your infrastructure needs to have that patch installed and then, well, like I mentioned earlier, Ansible will connect to each of those servers and carry out that instruction to install the patch on all of those servers. Therefore, since Ansible is mutable, it's able to access servers and change their configuration without recreating the entire thing. It doesn't replace existing servers with brand new servers like Terraform does. So I just gave you guys some examples of how Terraform and Ansible are quite different. They solve completely different goals. But why is it then that so many people compare Terraform and Ansible against each other? 
Well, let's talk about some of the things that they have in common, and then I think that'll help it make more sense. And one of the reasons why Ansible and Terraform are often compared against each other is that there's a bit of overlap when it comes to their feature sets. For example, both Ansible and Terraform are agentless. And that definitely simplifies how you use each of those solutions. Without an agent, there's nothing for you to install on the target servers ahead of time. And considering that it's Terraform's job to create the initial servers in the first place, that makes sense. You can't install an agent on something that technically doesn't exist yet. In addition, neither Ansible or Terraform require programming experience. Sure, there's going to be similarities in the syntax when you compare the syntax to actual programming languages, but both solutions can absolutely be learned without having experience with a full programming language. Also, both Ansible and Terraform require access to cloud environments that you want them to manage, so for both solutions, you'll have to maintain and secure their access to your cloud accounts. And that's not even all. There's additional overlap as well when it comes to the individual things that you could do with each of the solutions. Even though Terraform, for example, its job is to create infrastructure, there's nothing stopping you from using it to run a script on the target server that you've created with Terraform, and it's actually quite common. And considering that you can instruct Terraform to run a script on any server that it creates, in that case, there's nothing stopping you from actually having it do everything. But like I mentioned earlier, that's not a very efficient way to do it, and that's also not why Terraform was created. Now, when it comes to Ansible, Ansible is also able to create infrastructure as well. And one example of that is you can absolutely instruct Ansible to create a container. Ansible is able to log into a containerization solution that you might have installed, and then instruct that solution to spin up a container whenever you want it to. Ansible is also able to connect to some firewalls and switches out there and configure those, but again, that's not the primary purpose for Ansible, even if it is able to do those things. That doesn't mean that it's a competitor to any other solution. Again, there's overlap, and sometimes that can make it a bit confusing to understand where one solution ends and the other begins. So when it comes to Ansible and Terraform, which one should you use? Should you use both? Well, actually, yeah, you should definitely consider using both Ansible and Terraform, and here's why. For example, what you're seeing on the screen right now is a Terraform config file, a Terraform file, and inside this file, it's actually going to call Ansible to perform configuration. Earlier, I mentioned that Terraform, for example, is able to run scripts against servers that it creates within your infrastructure. And as you can see on the line right here, it's calling Ansible. And this particular line is calling a playbook for Ansible called apache.yml, so as soon as this server has been created by Terraform, then Terraform is going to run this command against that server. And that's just one example. But when it all comes down to it, Terraform is a great choice when it comes to creating cloud resources that don't exist yet, as well as making changes to your underlying infrastructure. In an empty cloud environment, you could use Terraform to define and create the underlying network, as well as the instances that will utilize that network. And more specifically, when it comes to networking, you could use Terraform to configure entire network subnets, including how they're accessed, right down to the IP address scheme each network will use. When it comes to server instances, you could use Terraform to define individual details, such as how many CPU cores the VM must have, and other details as well. And with that solution, you also define which image you want to create your instances from, so for example, on Linode, if you wanted to spin up a Debian instance, then you would choose the Debian image here on Linode to make that happen. You would just tell Terraform which one to use, which image to use, and then it'll go ahead and follow your particular instructions. But again, once Terraform creates your infrastructure, that's technically where it ends. And that's the perfect segue right into Ansible. As a configuration management solution, you can configure Ansible to ensure that each device within your cloud network is fine-tuned and is always at its desired state. This might include things like ensuring specific versions of software is installed, having security patches installed as well, creating individual user accounts, configuring firewalls, and much, much more. But again, a more simple way to put this is that Terraform makes things exist, and Ansible takes things that already exist and further configures them. Now, Terraform and Ansible are just two tools among many within the infrastructure as code space. There's many tools within that space, and there's plenty other ones to go over on this channel, and some of which we already have gone over on this channel. But if you don't already have a preference, Terraform is a great solution for creating resources on your cloud network, and Ansible is awesome when it comes to configuring those resources. So like I mentioned several times now, they complement each other fairly well. 
Anyway, I gave you guys an overview of both tools. I hope that helped you out and cleared up some confusion if there was any confusion. Let us know what you think down in the comments below this video. I would really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.